six in the morning in Zinestri, a small village in the south of Moldova, close to the Romanian border. Just as he does every other day, Anton cooks breakfast for his younger brothers and sisters. Since their mother left five years ago to work in Turkey, Anton is now head of the family. The four children have had to raise themselves. Their father is an alcoholic and is rarely at home. The last time they saw their mother was two years ago. <laughs> I miss her so much. All the children who have a mother don't know how lucky they are. I last saw my mummy on the 20th of December, five years ago. My younger brother and I were crying, but our older brothers made fun of us. She packed her things and went across the field. That was the last time I saw her. She just went away. Anton's family is not an isolated case. According to Moldova's Ministry of Education, 30,000 children have been left without parents who have often illegally gone to seek work abroad. These so-called social orphans live with relatives in orphanages and sometimes even alone. The children have to take care of the animals on their farm before they head off to school. They name their calf Marius. No one needs to tell them what their daily chores are. They know them well enough already. No, we don't cut school. Sometimes I have to get wood, then I can't go, but otherwise I always go to school. Everyone in the village knows the hard-working children. They're a role model for other children who grew up without parents. Their daily journey to school isn't far. But here too, the poverty is palpable. The school has no heating. The toilets are shabby outside huts. And there's certainly no such thing as a school gym kit. In Anton's class, the children are learning about the recent EU expansion. On being asked how many children have parents working abroad, almost one third of the class get up. My mother left two years ago to work in Turkey. My mother left three years ago and was taking care of elderly people. My mother worked as a waitress in Romania. The same is true in Anton's brother Costa's class. For these children, left behind in poverty-stricken Moldova, childhood is all too fleeting. My father has been working in Greece on a construction site for the past three years. He calls regularly, but I miss him very much. On the outside, Anton looks like an average child, but inside he's already a grown-up. He has so much responsibility. He has to take care of his younger brothers and sisters, and sometimes he does not have enough time to do his homework. In the past five years, he's become very serious and solemn. Moldova was once a prosperous country which supplied the Soviet Union with much of its goods. But the glory days are long gone. The economy is in shambles. The factories are closed and there are no jobs. To the east, the country is embroiled in a volatile conflict in Transnistria, just frightened off Western investors. The only way out is to flee abroad. About 20 to 25 percent of the population have left the country, especially from the rural areas. That means that the fields are lying fallow and the children stay behind. One quarter of the population. Can you imagine what an economic effect that has on a country? This is already the poorest country in Europe. 
and here in southern Moldova, the poverty is extreme. In the small town of Zernesti, one half of the inhabitants live beneath the official poverty line of a dollar a day. Where parents are missing, grandparents often have to step in to fill the gap. Five of Annika's seven children work abroad. At 86, she hadn't counted on being a mother again, but she has no choice. Now she prays she'll stay healthy long enough to keep on looking after her grandchildren. The mother of these children, my daughter, is a doctor. But despite the good education, she still has to go and work abroad. The government does nothing to help us. Even if you are highly qualified, that doesn't mean that you'll find a job that enables you to feed your children. I see no future for my children. There are just old people and kids in Zanestri now. And the few people of working age left are scrabbling for their chance to leave the misery and squalor behind. You need about two and a half thousand dollars to cross the borders illegally and work in Europe. If I had the money, I'd be gone already. In this village alone, half the population has left already. The abandoned children have to make the best out of their situation. Their chores are evenly divided. They clean the house, cook and wash their clothes. Their biggest pride is a well they built themselves. I built this well with my brothers. We dug for one week. It's seven meters deep. We also made these rings ourselves. But we need concrete for ten more rings, and then we'll be finished. Their income comes from the little money they earn with their hothouses. Here they plant tomatoes and peppers. Everyone lends a helping hand, but the revenues are small. Depending on the harvest, they earn between $150 and $350 a year. The money has to pay their bills, the food for the animals, clothes for themselves and supplies for school. But they have each other, their friends and the community. Other children are less fortunate. They landed in an orphanage like this one run by NGO UNICEF. Our visit was announced and the kids are all dressed up for the occasion. There we meet Koila. My mother froze to death because she wanted to cross the border to work illegally in Italy. She gave her bag to the smuggler so that he could take it across the river. But he never came back. My mother froze to death in her clothes. The children on our farm have got used to their hard life. I wish my mother could come back. She said she would come for Easter, then for Christmas, but she never came. Life is tough for these kids, but they're modest and hard-working. Even the gift of a soccer ball is like manna from heaven. Imagine if they got their parents back. Uh-huh.